What's up guys, Justin here. So in this video, I'm gonna start my series on creating and working with different files within Unreal Engine. So I'm not 100% sure what direction this is gonna go long term, but I wanted to create a series that at least shows you the basics of how to bring things into Unreal Engine, kind of an idea of the way everything works, just enough to at least get you started in order so you can start using the engine to create things of your own. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to get started, I'm gonna walk you through how to download and install Unreal Engine. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to unrealengine.com and then you're gonna to wanna to go up to this option in the upper right hand corner for download. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna take you to a screen where you can select what your license agreement is gonna be. So if you're planning on developing games that you're intending to distribute, then you're gonna to wanna to select this first option. If you're more planning on creating like 3D visualizations and that kind of thing, then you're gonna to wanna to go to the enterprise section where uh, you're basically agreeing to the Unreal Studio license agreement. And the difference is um, in the future, and right now Unreal Studio is in a little bit of a beta test, so it's free. I think in the future it's going to have a monthly fee associated with it. But as far as I know, the only difference here is you're just agreeing to the license terms. So in this case, um, if you select the studio option, you're basically agreeing to use the royalty-free license for visualization and that sort of thing, as opposed to developing a software that you're going to distribute. So go ahead and select the option that you want. So my understanding is the only thing that's different here is the license agreement. I believe the download is the same either way. But go ahead and click this button and then what it's going to do is it's going to take you to a page where you can go ahead and download your launcher. So it's going to download the installer. And so once this installer is downloaded then you can go ahead and click on that and use that to install the engine. So I'm going to cancel that download because I already have that in here. But uh, I believe what that's going to do is that's going to bring up a screen that looks like like this and you may have to I'm not sure if it's through the library or through this option right here but you're gonna want to go in and you're gonna need to add a version of Unreal Engine and so um, and so in this case I actually have a higher version installed in here mine looks a little bit different because I do not have a very good internet connection at home so I have to download the stuff separately and run it separately but in your case what you're gonna want to do assuming you have a faster internet connection is you're gonna want to click the plus button and then you're gonna want to select one of the versions of Unreal Engine in order to download. So uh, this 4.20 version, which is still in preview, um, anything above that should have the Datasmith features where you can, um, they basically help you import geometry from different uh, 3D modeling applications. So I'll link to a video down below that I did about importing um, SketchUp files using Datasmith. So you're gonna wanna install one of these and then once that's installed, then you're gonna want to just come over here and you're gonna wanna launch a version that you have installed. So in this case, you would click on Unreal Engine 4.18.2 or whatever your version is. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a screen that looks like this. And so basically what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you an option to either open up an existing project that you have um, already saved or it's going to give you the option under the new project tab in order to create your own project. And so um, in this case what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. So go over to your new project tab and we're going to take a look at a couple of the different options. So the first option on here is blueprint. So the blueprint files are basically template files that come in with things like controllers and everything else for different applications. So like in this case for example if we were to select the option for first person and let's say we created a file called first person shooter test maybe just first person shooter and go ahead and click create project what that's going to do is that's going to bring your project into Unreal Engine and it's going to contain a lot of things like a controller and some other things that you can use in order to create a first person shooter game so you can see how in this case that brings in basically a world and also a camera and some other objects as well and so if I was to come up here and click the play button um, I'd be able to actually drop into this 
and actually move around and actually shoot the gun and some of these objects are actually moving around so you can actually use this to push these objects around so you can actually use these template files um, in order to create things really quickly um, without having to have a whole lot of programming knowledge like I didn't have to come in here and figure out how to program the gun or anything like that in this case I'm gonna go back in this case though, what I want to look at specifically is I want to come over to the Unreal Studio files. And so the Unreal Studio is basically going to be a file that you can use in order to, uh, this will basically create a clean, empty Unreal Studio project. So in this case, we're just going to call this something like um, Test Project 1. And I'm going to go ahead and select this template file right here. Um, so there's two template files in here. There's a product viewer, which is going to bring in a lot of different lighting assets and that kind of thing. We don't necessarily need those for this one. So we're just going to go with the blank. And we're going to go ahead and click Create Project. And so this is what your screen's going to look like. It's going to basically load this inside Unreal Engine. And so what you're going to get is you're going to get a screen that looks a lot like this. And the other thing I wanted to do in this video is just go through um, basically what we're looking at here so I want to get a little more in detail um, as to what all of this is so the first thing I want to do is I want to go over a couple different definitions because that's going to be a little bit important you're going to need this or you're going to need to know this as you work on your projects so the first thing is this overall file is called a project file so that's the file you create that contains everything else it's got all the content and code within your game needed to make it run and so in this case if I look in my PC um, wherever my unreal projects are stored you can see how um, basically that project that I created creates a folder um, within my unreal projects folder and so if I double click on that all of that information that's going to be associated with that is going to be contained in the folder with the name of the project that you created so this is going to have a content folder it's going to have some other folders in here as well so your contact your content folder is going to be especially important because a lot of the different assets and things that you create are going to go within that folder it's going to contain the things associated with your project so the overall thing that you have in here is a project within that um, what you have is you have different levels and so levels basically contain the different scenes and objects that your your player or user is going to experience within your project you can have multiple levels though it's likely if you're creating architectural visualizations you'll probably only have one level in your project files and so the level is basically anything that you see in here so in this case this is going to be it's basically like my workspace and then within this you're going to have different items so you can see how there's different items in here that have different uh, things associated with them so there's a controller that you can use to move around um, there's like a reflection capture so these are kind of the items that are basically put in here by default within Unreal Engine and those are known as actors and so an actor is basically any object that's contained in your level so anything that gets brought in so like for example if I was to bring like a cube in here that's going to be considered an actor so if I bring a sphere in, basically anything that I bring in, any of the lighting, any of the stuff in here is considered an actor within Unreal Engine's mind. And so that's just something that's going to be important for you to understand. Um, as, as we move forward, we're going to talk about those terms and you need to know what those mean. So now I want to talk a little bit about the different windows and the different settings contained in here because this is actually pretty overwhelming when you first open it up. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I want to talk a little bit about just what some of it means and a little bit about how to navigate around in here. So to start off, you have the tab and menu bar. And so the tab and menu bar is going to contain your... Uh, basically your file edit um, basically if you've ever worked in Windows this is where those things are gonna be contained so things for managing your project like saving creating new levels new projects that sort of thing are all gonna be contained in here so in addition if you have multiple levels I believe those are gonna show up as different tabs at the top of your screen 
So in addition to your tab and menu bar, you're also going to have your toolbar. And so the toolbar is designed to allow you access to various tools. So I've already talked a little bit about importing Datasmith files on my other channel, but uh, you can also use this to change different settings. Um, you can use this to access the marketplace where you can download different things, um, as well as options for like playing or testing your different files. So things like playing this level in the active editor, if I click on this, I can actually come in here and I can test run what I have in here by clicking this play button. So the mode section is going to be off to your left and you can use the mode section to add and change different things within your model. So like for example, that's where I brought my cube and my sphere in, but basically this is kind of like a library of things that you can bring into your model or into your um, into your level. So it's got a list of different things like lights and camera rigs and visual effects and uh, so it's got a lot of different objects that you can bring in. It's also got things like the ability to paint different materials, um, create and sculpt different landscaping objects. So like for example if I was to create kind of a landscape mesh in here So you can come in here and you can create like a landscape mesh and then you can use the different tools in here. You can use this to sculpt different landscaping um, as well as you can add foliage. So there's a lot of different options that you can use in here in order to, um, to add and adjust different things within your level. So the content browser is gonna be where you can manage all of the different things in here. So when you start importing different assets from like uh, from SketchUp or from 3ds Max or wherever, a lot of that information is gonna show up down here. So this is gonna mirror the content folder that's contained wherever your test project file is located. So I could come in here for example and create a new folder. We could call it something like SketchUp models and hit the enter key then if you go in and you look at your content folder within your project um, that folder is going to show up in here so basically this is mirroring that folder within your project and so keeping all this organized is going to get really important so the world outliner is uh, basically an outliner that gives you uh, some information about the different objects within your model. So I can click between these different objects to get to them really easily. So you can see how as I click on those within my world outliner, they're also getting highlighted inside my viewport. And so you can use this to hide or show different objects. You can click on the little eye to turn those on and off. And uh, this also contains information about what kind of actors these are. So whether they're static mesh actors or um, different things, this, this calls this out as like a directional light. You can see information about the different things within your Unreal Engine file um, using the outliner. So the details section is located down below the outliner, at least in kind of the default look. And so that's gonna contain information about your currently selected object. So in this case, for example, if I was to select this cube, then I can actually click and drag the rotation factor over here on the right and you can see how my cube is rotating so you can adjust different things about its location in the world as well as things like the materials that are supplied to it or applied to it the different physics applied to it that sort of thing so you can use this to adjust the attributes of the different actors that you bring into your level you're basically so and then the last section I want to talk about is the viewport itself. And so the viewport is where you can actually see the current level that you're working with. So you can actually turn multiple different viewports on within Unreal Engine. So like for example, if I go up to window and I get a viewports and I check the box for viewport two, Viewport 2 is going to show up in here um, in addition to Viewport 1. So you can have multiple different viewports um, active at one time. So if you want, you can have multiple different scenes in here or multiple different views in here that allow you to edit different things within your model. And you can also come in here and you can, um, 
If you have multiple different viewports open, you can click this little button right here to either maximize or kind of tile the different viewports that you have. So like for example, I could have a perspective viewport in here and I could also have like a top, a left, a right, um, that sort of thing. So you can see how here I have a right, a front, a top, and I can come in here and I can adjust the location of different objects in any of these different viewports. So you can see how as I move these within uh, the different viewports, they're also moving in the perspective viewports. So you can have multiple viewports active at once. And so if I wanna maximize my perspective, I can just click on this. But you can also just fly around by clicking and dragging or also using the W, A, S, and D keys in order to fly around inside the perspective view of your viewport. So, and there's a lot of different things you can adjust in here. You can adjust like the way this looks, the way the lighting works. So you can take this to a wireframe, you can take it to detail lighting. You can, you, there's a lot of different views that you can use in here. And there's also some options in here for some different tools. So like for example, right now, select and translate is, sel is the tool that's active. So I can use that to move things around. However, if I was to go in here and do the select and rotate, then this is gonna change this so I can rotate different objects within my model. Or this one allows me to scale different things about objects within my model. So these tools can allow you to edit a bunch of different things within your Unreal Engine um, projects. As we move forward, we'll talk a little bit more about adding different actors to your files, adjusting different settings, and a lot of different things associated with Unreal Engine. So make sure you subscribe so that you can catch all of those tutorials as we uh, move forward. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new content every week. Um, and as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.